According to DCI resolution standards, I will need to upscale my film to 2K in a 185 aspect ratio, which is 1998 by 1080. Now you may come across some forums saying that there are some DCP servers that can do 1920 by 1080, but unless you can test the DCP at the venue ahead of time, I wouldn't. Besides, I would rather have one DCP that is compatible everywhere. Now we're going to move to After Effects. Open After Effects and close out the welcome window that pops up. You don't want to make a composition yet. Go to File, Adobe Dynamic Link, and select Import Premiere Pro Sequence. Find the Premiere project file, look for the sequence labeled 24 frames per second master, and then select OK. The sequence will appear in the project pane. Click and drag the sequence to the composition timeline to create a new composition. I've found that if you create a composition any other way, you will have to manually type in the duration. This way sets the length automatically. First you want to go to Composition and Composition Settings. Here you will change the name if need be and set the correct resolution. Under Preset, select Custom. Uncheck Lock Aspect Ratio. For mine, I will type in 1998 by 1080. As you can see, it changes the aspect ratio to 185. I can now check Lock Aspect Ratio. Make sure Pixel Aspect Ratio is set to square pixels, the frame rate is set to 24, resolution is full, and the duration matches the length of your film in 24 frames per second. Once that is done, click OK. You will see that two small pillars were added, retaining the native aspect ratio, but displaying it in 185. You will also want to go to the project pane and click on the icon that says 8 bits per channel. You will want to change the color depth to 16 bits per channel. Why? Technically only 16-bit images are DCI compliant, though 8-bit images will work on most DCP servers. 16-bit will also give you the best results when creating the various image sequences and eventually converting from RGB to XYZ color space. It will, however, increase your storage requirements by one and a half times. Go to Composition and select Add to Render Queue. Some earlier versions of After Effects will use the Make Movie command. Click on the Render tab and double check the render settings. Make sure everything is set to the best quality and the frame rate is still 24. Go to the Output module. Under Format, select TIFF Sequence. Now this is very important. For depth, select Trillions of Colors. If you leave it at the default Millions of Colors setting, it will export 8-bit TIFF images. Leave everything else the same. Go to Output 2 and find the folder designated for your TIFF image sequence. Make sure that it is a separate folder with nothing else in it. For my film, I'm about to create 121,969 TIFF images. Good luck sorting through that on your desktop. You can also rename the sequence. As you can see, each TIFF image in the sequence will be named Pembroke underscore followed by a sequential number to keep the ordering. Once all of the settings look good, click Render. Pay attention to the number in the parentheses on the far right. That is the total number of frames in your film. You will need to know this number to double check some of the future processes. Very, very important. As I said before, creating a TIFF sequence of your film will have huge storage requirements. At 16-bit 2K, my film required almost 19 gigabytes a minute at 24 frames per second. The final TIFF stream was about 1.6 terabytes, and it took about nine and a half hours to complete this step. We now need to split each channel into its own mono wave file. We will do this using Audition. Go back to your Premiere sequence with your 24 frames per second master, select it in the project pane, right click, and go to Edit in Adobe Audition. It should automatically create a multi-track project. I would recommend setting the file path to the project file folder for organizational purposes. Leave all the settings the same, but do make sure that selection is set to entire sequence and everything else is checked except the export preview video.
Once Audition opens, ensure that the Waveform tab is selected. In the Files pane, double-click on the mixdown from your Premiere sequence, not the XML sequence. This will be a Waveform audio file. Make sure it is highlighted yellow, otherwise it is not selected. Right-click and select Extract Channels to Mono Files. If your mix is a stereo mix, it will create two new files in the Files pane labeled with an L for the left channel and an R for the right. If your mix is in 5.1, it will split it into six different audio files. My film is in stereo, but let me import a 5.1 file as an example. So using the same process, you can see we now have six files. And the labels go as follow. L for left, R for right, C for center, LFE is a subwoofer channel, LS for the left surround, and RS for right surround. Check each extracted mono file to make sure there's a waveform by double clicking on it. You can also spot check to make sure it plays. If it doesn't, that means that the audio channels were not set up correctly in Premiere. See step two and resend to audition. Double click on each individual file, then go to file, export, and then file. When the export window comes up, the first thing you need to do is rename the file. I would recommend this naming strategy for stereo in 5.1. The name or abbreviation of your film, underscore audio, and then underscore channel abbreviation. In OpenDCP, the LFE channel is referred to as sub, so you may want to use that abbreviation instead. Click on Browse and select the audio folder. Make sure the format is set to WAV. Make sure that the sample type is 48 kilohertz, mono, and 24-bit. And the format settings are WAV uncompressed, and 24-bit integer. You can leave include markers and other metadata checked, then press OK. Do this for every channel. As an extra precaution, you can open each WAV file in QuickTime, go to Window, and show Movie Inspector. It will list the file format, so you can double-check it exported properly. Now you are finally ready to go into OpenDCP.